Hi there, welcome to uh, an unusually late edition of IndyCar. It's not often they do these evening broadcasts, but since it's, well, still daylight here in Glasgow, I thought, well, why not give you a later broadcast? Now, the subjects for tonight's programme are in no particular order, but let's start, first of all, with the uh, emergency alert system, which the United Kingdom rolled out recently. To a lot of fanfare, but um, ultimately, from what I can glean, and I've asked countless members of my family and friends and relations all over the place if they got this alert, and approximately 60% of them didn't get anything at all, even though they didn't disable the alerts on their phones. So it seems to have been a bit of a flop. I mean, when most people are not getting the alerts, what is the point of a system like that? So it seems to be a colossal amount of money wasted on something which doesn't actually work properly. But it might surprise you to know, and it surprised me to find this out today, and I cannot at the moment verify what the source of this story is or whether it's true or not, but according to a source of mine, the uh, contract which was awarded by the British government for the development of this system initially went to the Japanese company Fujitsu, great you think okay so it's going to somebody who knows what they're doing but no that's not quite what happened Fujitsu apparently subcontracted the creation of this phone app system to a British company called Infosys now Infosys just happens to be owned by Richie Sunak's wife so just let that permeate down for a moment or two so if this is true then the Prime Minister's wife has pretty much benefited from a useless app which was basically paid for out of yours and my tax money and the Prime Minister and his wife have benefited to the tune of I, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of pounds which this cost. This echoes very much the famous uh, 37 billion pounds which vanished into thin air after it was given to Dido Harding to develop the so-called um, app which was supposed to alert everybody about Covid, the one which didn't work, never actually happened. And the money just seemed to vanish somewhere. Nobody really knows where it went, and Dido Harding hasn't said a word about it ever since. But this is different. This is the Prime Minister actually perpetrating a fraud. He has deliberately, or his wife has deliberately, funnily enough, managed to get the contract from Fujitsu to do this thing. It didn't work, but they've still treasured several, possibly hundreds of millions of pounds in the process very odd, very suspicious, and as I've said at the moment, I can't substantiate this story yet, but have a look at Infosys and see if Rishi Sunak's wife is a director of it. It might well be true. I don't know, I haven't had a chance to verify the story, but if it is true, it's just another story of Tory cronyism, but not only that, but it's actually fraud because they were basically embezzling money from the public purse to enrich themselves with an app that doesn't actually work properly. Where have we heard that before? So that was the first piece of information. Of course, we also heard today that um, Hamza Youssef, the new First Minister, was down meeting Rishi Sunai. And it is alleged, although I haven't read exactly the form of words that were used, that they had a long discussion about all kinds of things, including Scotch whisky, apparently. And according to the reports, Hamza Youssef asked the first, uh, sorry, asked the Prime Minister for yet another Section 30 order so that we can hold an independence referendum as per his promise that he was going to fight for independence. Strangely, we have not heard a single word from the so-called independence minister who was appointed by Hamza Youssef in the first day or two of his new uh, job as first minister. So the independence minister hasn't said a word about this. We haven't heard yet what the, the prime minister said in reply to this question, but I think we can all guess that it's probably not yes, of course you can. The British government is never, ever, ever in, in the rest of recorded time ever going to agree to a Section 30 order. Anything which threatens the existence of the precious union is never going to happen. So I think uh, 
Hamza Yusuf is being disingenuous when he claims that he's fighting for independence. He's going through the motions of appearing to fight for independence, but we all know that it isn't going to work. We would really want to know what he's actually going to do to get independence through the ballot box, because that's the only way we can do this. So I am waiting to hear with bated breath at some point, hopefully in the next term of his government, what he's going to do, because at the moment there is no plan at all, zero, zilch, nothing. And um, despite the fact that some people are rejoining the SNP, other people are saying they've left and they're not coming back, the figures for the SNP's membership have dropped, although they have bounced back a little bit today, possibly by another hundred, uh, another thousand people or so, which is good. It's nice to see that people are going back to them if, if they believe that the SNP is actually trying to get independence. But the fact of the matter is they are the only party which can deliver an independence vote of any kind. And until Hamza Yusuf actually starts saying something about that, nobody is really going to be putting their shoulder to the wheel to actually campaign for it. At least nobody who is uh, a supporter of party politics, at least. And that brings me to my last piece of news today. And I just heard uh, from Salvo that the first Glasgow Hub meeting is to be held in the Bacchus pub in the city centre of Glasgow on the 6th of May to coincide with the new hat for King Charles being presumably stuck on his head. So I think, you know, we're looking now at the birth of a new type of liberation movement, one which is not party political, one which is led by people, and interesting, I was looking at the way the Salvo Hub and the Salvo organization is actually constructed and the way it is led. And it's not led by a single person. It is led by a group of individuals. Uh, and everybody um, has a role in this. But nobody is the overall sort of leader of this organization. And I think that is a very good idea. The last thing we want is a single person attracting all the fire of the British media. So it's good that we have multiple leaders, but it's also a democratic organization. It's also free to join it. And you can also join and become part of Liberation Scott, which again is a free organization. A Liberation Scott is promoted. It's, it's a part of Salvo's work. Salvo's work is to educate people on their rights uh, and their historical constitution and what they are currently enabled to do by that constitution and the fact that it has never been repealed and is still current. The second part of Salvo's um, activities is to encourage people to join Liberation.Scot. Now Liberation.Scot is a people's liberation movement. Now rather than saying we want independence, we're talking about liberation because according to Salvo and the way that they have presented the facts of this and the history of Scottish uh, nationhood and the history of the Union. And Scotland isn't in the Union of Equals. It's not a voluntary union that we're in. It was basically a hostile takeover. It was an annexation. We were forced into the Union. There was no democracy involved in it. None of the population got a vote in it. And according to the current political climate, we're not going to be allowed a vote to leave it either. So it is definitely not a union in that sense. We are not part of a family of nations and we're all equal. We're very much not equal. None of the Celtic nations have equal rights in the union. But what it is, is a political union. It was a union of two kingdoms, of Scotland and England, two ancient kingdoms, which together were going to form a new kingdom, not a new country, a new kingdom. In other words, a single crown for both nations. And both nations would act together using the English Parliament as the location. The Scots would have their own Parliament inside that chamber and it would act as a part of this larger Parliament. All very good so far, but of course they were outnumbered and that meant that Scotland ended up being basically bulldozed out of the way. And that has historically been where we've been ever since. However, the Union did not say that England could exploit or steal our natural resources. Those natural resources still belong to us. And the Liberation Movement's job is to build enough support so that there are hundreds of thousands of Liberation Scott 
me move movement members. In other words, this is an organisation which is huge, and it could have a membership overseas as well, of expatriate Scots as well. There's no limit on where you live in the world in order to be a part of Liberation Scott. It's a mass movement organisation of Scottish people, wherever they happen to be. And the idea is to present our right to self-determination to the rest of the world, to the United Nations, to the International Court of Justice, to the European Union and everybody else in these large multinational organisations to claim our right to self-determination and to make sure that we are allowed to exercise it in the most basic forms because the United Nations Charter, all the countries which sign it, including the United Kingdom, accept the right to self-determination. They have to or they're not allowed to be members. We want basically to demand that our right to self-determination be respected and we can only do that when enough people, enough voters, enough citizens of the country make enough noise about it and assert their rights and that is really what Liberation Scott is all about. So that first meeting is coming up in the Bacchus pub, I think that's the right way to say it, uh, on the 6th of May. I'll check the time for you, I'm guessing it might be in the evening but I will check and it will be electing office bearers and it will be looking for volunteers. This is one of dozens of city and town hubs which are being set up across Scotland to coordinate the activities of the Liberation Scott movement and to involve everyone in the work of Salvo in getting the knowledge out to friends, relatives, workmates and acquaintances of their rights to vote on the self-determination of Scotland on its future. And once we've educated people of the fact that they have these rights, then they can't then unlearn that because these are facts. These are historical facts written down in our constitution, confirmed by the claim of right in 1689, and further, basically, uh, I suppose, cemented in place by the fact that none of these laws and these pieces of legislation which guarantee those rights has ever been repealed by anybody. They still exist, we still are sovereign, and we still can exercise that sovereignty, no matter what the British media says. Anyway, that's about it from me today, but bear in mind, somebody benefited from that flop of an emergency uh, alert system and it's beginning to look as though Richie Sunak's wife had her fingers in that particular pie. It'd be interesting to see if any more of this story comes out from more reliable sources later in the week, but I'm just telling you what I've heard so far. As I say, I can't substantiate this story, but if it's true, then it's just yet another piece of Tory political corruption. And unfortunately, it is exactly this kind of corruption that we're trying to free ourselves from. That's it from me tonight. I hope you have a pleasant evening. I hope to see you again tomorrow. And again, thank you to everybody who is continuing to support my crowdfund appeal. Please keep donating as well, because the more war chest I can build up over the next few weeks, the longer I can keep this going. And I want to keep these programs running to counter all of the plastered um, British media propaganda narrative, which is daily invading everybody's lives without any respect and without anyone else trying to counter it on the media, because we don't have a media to counter it on. We're not allowed to have television channels which aren't controlled by the Tories in Westminster. And again, that is the sign of an oppressor, that's the sign of an authoritarian state, a dictatorship. We are not having this. And you should join Salvo and become a member of Liberation Scott if you care enough uh, to want to exercise your rights to self-determination under international law. Never mind British law. There is no such thing as British law. There is Scots law and English law and neither one of them has any effect on an international treaty between two countries. Only international law can do that. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Have a great evening. Bye for now.